Hello, today we're going to show you how to change the oil in a Land Rover. The specific application today is a 2013 LR4. It's got the 8-cylinder uh, V8 5-liter and it's uh, pretty much applicable to all the others. You'll have to forgive me, I'm outside, I can't do anything about the bugs. Uh, South Alabama, it's hot and the bugs are out, so let's get started. Here are the parts you need. First and foremost, you'll need a vacuum pump. Um, I'll put a link to these in the description below, so if you want to buy them, uh, there will be affiliate links. They don't cost anything more, but I might make a few cents off of it if you buy through those affiliate links. The vacuum pump connects to the engine and allows you to suck the oil out of the engine from the top side, so you don't even have to get underneath of it. I use rubber gloves to keep my hands from getting dirty. You'll need the device to take off the cover for the oil filter. You need a little bucket and a funnel. You need a filter. I usually buy AC Delco. You, know, you can buy anything you want. Uh, there are several different brands that are quite good. One thing you need to make sure of when you buy this particular filter is make sure that on the tip here, the O-rings are in place. There's one here, there's one here, and there is a extra O-ring that goes on the cap. And we'll show you how to replace all those. I don't recommend you get the cheapest thing you can possibly buy when you're buying a oil filter. You know, it's a $10,000 piece of equipment, your motor engine. Don't cheap out and try to save 50 cents or $2 on your oil filter. Get a good oil filter. You also need oil. This particular model takes eight liters or about eight and a half quarts. I use liquid Molly because it's the one that is recommended by Land Rover. You can use any good synthetic, I would imagine. But since I've used it for so long, since it was under warranty, I want to keep doing that. One quick tip here about if you buy liquid Molly, a lot of people don't realize this, but this is actually a peelable sticker where you can put the mileage for the next change and you can put that on your window. It peels off real easy. So those are the pieces of equipment that you need. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we need to do is take the cover off the engine. It's real easy. This pops up and pulls forward. And get it out of the way. The next thing we need to do is to take the... Let me move you over here where you can see a little bit better. The oil fill cap is down in here. Let's take it loose. Be careful, the engine's very hot. Take it loose, set it off to the side. That's where we'll be pulling the oil from here in a little bit. Next thing we need to do is break the vacuum on the oil filter cover. Using this tool, we will remove the oil filter cover. I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see what we're talking about. This is the oil filter cover. It's a piece of plastic, so you need to be careful with it. This fits right on top there, and then very gently twist until it starts to move. I usually do a couple of turns. Okay. Need my other hand, so I'm going to have to set you down. See what I'm doing. Again, be careful, this is exceptionally hot. Comes off just like that. Hey, good. And that's how you take the oil filter out.
Okay, our next step is to vacuum out the oil. You take this tip from the vacuum machine. You can see I put a couple of zip ties around it because the problem is when it gets hot, when you're taking hot oil out, the rubber gets kind of soft and it'll want to come loose. So put a couple of zip ties on there pretty tight to help secure it. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting it on this hole right here. Can you see that? That's where we'll be connecting it, just right there. Push it right on, just like that. Then we come back over to this machine, make sure the button's down, and up. Oops, wrong way. I didn't have that down. And you'll see, oil will start coming into the reservoir. You don't have to pump the entire time. Get a pretty good vacuum started. And let it run. This particular vacuum holds right at eight liters. It's right here. So it should hold all the oil that we need to take out. That's one thing you want to be careful of, depending on how much oil your vehicle holds. You want to get one big enough to take it all out in one shot, because otherwise it just takes a lot longer time. And now that we've got all the oil out, so I got just shy of eight quarts there. I mean, eight liters. We'll disconnect it and set it off to the side and let it cool a little bit. See how the end came off? I'll have to get a pair of pliers and take that loose. I forgot to show is you'll see bubbles in the line when it's empty. So it's just barely pulling any oil out. You can see the bubbles in the line here. Let me show you the little tip and how it gets lodged in here. You will want to remove this. Can you see that? You need to grab a hold of that little piece of pair of those pliers and just gently pull it right out. Now it's time to replace the filter. You remember the filter cartridge that we took out before? I'm going to replace that. It's real simple. You just take it out. Make sure to keep your O-ring. Check to make sure that your O-rings are intact. I usually take a little bit of oil. Spread it around these O-rings to make sure they're good and pliable. You have to get a little bit of oil off the oil filter to do that. Because you want them to be good and lubed so that they fit in position properly. Once you've done that, you can see there are several notches inside here. You just put it in. You see these little notches? There's a tab on the bottom. You just push it down on there until it pops in place. And that's it. Next thing you need to do is to, and I forgot to mention this before, you can use a screwdriver or anything you want. I generally like these little Harbor Freight picks because this is the O-ring that we need to change. So this makes it real easy to take that O-ring off. Put it down here. Get our new O-ring. Again, get a little bit of oil on your fingers. This is one of the reasons I like to wear gloves. Oil the O-ring up really good. And we'll just put it back on. Make sure it's in this bottom groove here. See how? Pop it right into that groove. And that's all there is to it. And we'll put that back together. So the next thing you do 
If you just look in the hole here, you see that? And just tighten it up. Get your tool, turn it to tighten. Now remember, this thing's plastic, so you don't want to tighten it too much. Just once you feel it snug, just snug it just a little bit. Pull your tool off. And next, will you fill it with oil? The next step is to fill the oil. I like to use a wide funnel. You just put it right in here where the cap came off. You can see it just fits right over that hole. You see that? Let's put it in here just like that and then we'll get the oil and start to fill. These liquid molly containers are pretty neat. On the top, take that, you pull it up, it comes up like that and then you twist it off. And that's how you get it up. There's a little ceiling cap in here. You can see that? You got a little ceiling cap. It pops right off. This is five liters in here, and we need eight liters. So very carefully just take it over and pour the whole thing in. Five of our leaves. We'll, use, we'll reuse this container to recycle our old oil. As you can see on the back of this one, they have marks one, two, three, four, and then of course the top is five. As you can tell here, I've got three liters left in this, which is exactly what we need. This is from my previous oil change. I'm going to take my dirty oil here, uh, it's got my filter and so forth in it, I'm going to drop that in, let it drain. Put the cap back on, see it tells you what they recommend. This uh, Castrol that they recommend is very difficult to find here in the United States, uh, that's why I use the liquid molly. Put the lid back on, right here, and that's it. Next thing we'll do is start the engine and check for leaks. Okay, let's start it and check for leaks. Start it, let it run for a few seconds. Telling me that the hood is open, which we know. It's okay to clear that. That's what the triangle is for. Just need to let it run for a few seconds to make sure oil gets good and circulated. And then I'll turn it off. Now, the way you check the oil level in this particular vehicle is you have to do it with key on engine off so you do it without pressing the brake pedal the problem is that it'll need to set for a little while because it wants all the oil to drain back into the pan but i'll show you how that works and we'll come back to it 
press the key or the start button without touching the brake. Let it get started up here. Just tell me the hood's open. And then we'll say OK. OK. Hit OK a third time, and you'll see down at the bottom there's a service menu and it has oil level display. There isn't a dipstick on this vehicle, so you have to use this, but you'll see that it is not available because the engine hasn't sat and cooled for a little while. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. The buttons that I'm pressing are here on the display, the OK and the up and down on the right hand side. The only place you really need to check for leaks is around the um, oil canister here. You can see there is nothing leaking, it looks good and dry, so we are good to put the lid back on, or the um, decorative cover back on. To put the decorative cover back on, you need a couple of things. It sits on these two posts and goes into that slot right there on both sides. And you'll see on the cover itself, there are two slots and two posts go in here. So let's put it back together. up here, make sure that those two go on the proper slots, which is easier said than done. Mr. Fancy Pants over here to let all the oil settle. He's got like a 10 minute timer um, before it will show the oil level. Let's go ahead and fill our containers up with the oil so we can take it to recycling. One thing you'll notice is that I have them turned with the strip, the clear strip towards me so I can see when they're about to get full. So the only thing you do is you go over here, take the same evacuation hose, put it in here, now you flip up the control knob, and when you pump, it goes the other direction. Alright, let's see if Mr. Fancy Pants here is cooled down enough to let me check the oil level. So don't put your foot on the brake, just press the start button. Let it boot up. Press OK. Go down to service menu and let's check the oil level display. And it shows right at the max and it is perfect okay and you can turn it back off last thing we need to do is to look at our mileage 91984 so i'm going to call that 92,000. land rover suggests that you change the oil every 15,000 miles i think that is way too much so i did about half that 7500 so we will add 7500 to 92 which will make if my math is correct, 99,500. So let's put that on the label and put it on the car. The new sticker is in place and we are finished.